Uh, hi, hello. Uh, can you hear me, Emma? Uh, uh, hello, uh, my name is uh, Zhen Chen. Uh, I'm a PhD student from uh, University of Bristol. My presentation's title is a uh, normal unified parameter for characterizing constraint level of multi axial uh, band specimen. Uh, I will introduce my work from these seven contexts. Uh, the constraint it can be considered as the resistance of a structure against the uh, plastic deformation. And uh, the, it can have a significant effect on the fracture toughness. Uh, a loss of uh, con constraint level can cause a high, uh, can cause an increase in the fracture toughness. Uh, a low, uh, a high constraint level component like uh, a standard specimen have lower uh, fracture toughness and uh, a low constraint level component with thinner, uh, with smaller uh, uh, thickness and uh, shallow crack have, uh, can have a higher uh, fracture toughness. So to reduce the over conservatism in the structural integrity assessment, uh, it's necessary to find a way to quantify the constraint level and establish a relationship between the constraint and the fracture toughness. The constraint can be divided into in-plane and out-of-plane constraint. Uh, for a component with a through thickness a crack, uh, the in-play constraint is mainly affected by the crank legs or the ligament legs. And uh, the, the outer plane constraint is affected by uh, the thickness. Uh, currently, there are two different type ca characterization methods. One is to, using, uh, to use uh, single parameter constraint parameters. Uh, you can see in this chart, <coughs> like T stress, Q and A2 are the in-plane constraint parameters, uh, but the TZ is the out-of-plane constraint parameter. And another math is using the unified constraint parameter, uh, which can uh, characterize both constraints at the same time. Uh, this makes them more useful in the real cases, which have uh, combined effects of two constraint, uh, but uh, for this all these uh, wild uh, wild accepted parameters, uh, these were all validate generally validated by the uh, CT or SENB samples. Uh, but uh, for many industri industrial uh, equipment, uh, they experience uh, multi x multi axial uh, loading uh, other than uniaxial loading. So it's also necessary to find uh, the effectiveness of these parameters on the uh, multi x effect. Uh, uh, sorry, uh, here is a mistake. Uh, there is no cue in this presentation. Uh, sorry. Uh, Actually, I investigate uh, uh, parameter phi, uh, which equals to AC over A. Uh, reference here. Uh, AC is the area of the plastic region at fracture. And uh, the A uh, reference is the reference area of the plastic region at the fracture for a standard specimen. Uh, besides, I also <coughs> proposed a novel unified par constraint parameter based on the plastic strategy. <coughs> uh, with comparison, I tried to find uh, I'll try to see if this proposed uh, parameter uh, works 
as well as the unified parameter phi for CT and SEMD samples. And uh, also want to see for the specimens affected by multi-axiality, uh, these how these how do these two parameters work? So to achieve these objectives, uh, we conducted a large number of uh, uniaxial and biaxial binding experiments. The material we used is BS15012428B uh, steel. The test temperature is under minus uh, 160 degree. Uh, two different type specimens were adopted. A cruciform uh, five-point band specimen and a rectangular three-point band specimen. Both, uh, all specimens have same thickness, uh, 10 millimeter, and the same AW ratio, 0 0.5. Except this test, we also co collected uh, lots of experimental data from 25 millimeter CT uh, samples and uh, 10 millimeters SEMD samples with AWHO equal to 0 0.5 for both from other literatures. Uh, to support our, <clears throat> to support the following uh, investigation. Uh, of course, these CT and SEMD samples were all made by the same material and uh, tested uh, at the same temperature. The uh, the purpose of this binding experiment is to capture the biaxiality. These two binding experiments have same basic setup, uh, a semi-spherical punch to apply the load, uh, four smaller uh, solid uh, cylinders, and a base to support the specimens. And before the test on the steel uh, specimens, we uh, conducted a comparison test on PMMA samples, uh, which have 25 millimeter thickness and uh, 0 0.5 AW ratio uh, at room temperature. And these PMMA samples have uh, approximate approximate linear elastic behavior with uh, steel samples in the lower transition region. So the crack propagation uh, of these PMMA samples and the steel samples are expected to be similar so that we can make sure our uh, test can capture the uh, biaxiality successfully. And uh, compared with the fractured um, specimens, uh, we can see the, the uh, fracture tra trajectory is, are very close. The, the three PB samples are uh, fractured in the middle along the ligament. And uh, uh, the five PB samples have S-shaped fracture trajectory. Uh, which shows an effect of biaxiality, uh, which means this binding experiment uh, acts uh, successful. Uh, and uh, <clears throat> to calculate two constraint parameters, uh, I also conducted a series of simulations uh, on the models with the same geometry as uh, tested samples. Uh, including CD and SEMD samples. And uh, in this slide, I show the solution of uh, bi the binding experiment. Here are the stress contouring uh, diagram, uh, diagrams of 3 PV and 5 PV specimens. And compared with two PMMA samples, uh, we can see the maximum stress distribution are very close to the, uh, to the fracture trajectory of PMM samples. And uh, besides, I also compared the simulated uh, load displacement curve with the experimental results. 
uh, you can see the those curves uh, agrees very very well, and the slope of the uh, elastic region are very close. So I believe these simulations uh, are correct. Then here I showed the procedure of uh, the proposed uh, parameter. Uh, as I mentioned before, the constraint is the resistance of a structure against the plastic deformation. So if I can, uh, if the plastic uh, the plastic work to cost uh, causes this plastic deformation can be calculated, uh, it can be used to uh, quantify the constraint uh, more accurately. So as I assume there are an element. Uh, around the corrective duration to yielding. And for one element I, uh, the work to cause this total, its total deformation can be calculated by this, uh, the first equation. And it can be seen as uh, the area of the, uh, in, the uh, in the right figure, it can be seen, it, it can be seen as the area of the, uh, area between the stress strain curve and the x axis uh, within the range of uh, zero to epsilon i. And uh, it includes, uh, and it includes uh, the elastic and plastic components. Uh, and the elastic components can be easily uh, calculated. Uh, consider the material hardening. The accurate elastic uh, component is the area of the triangle with diagonal uh, lines in the right figure. You can see this small, uh, small area. And then you, uh, the plastic component can be obtained uh, which equals to the difference between the total um, work and the, the elastic component. And uh, sum all the plastic components of n elements, the total plastic uh, strategy can be obtained. Uh, but uh, one problem is uh, the stress distribution of the crack tip is very complicated. So for uh, to simplify the calculation, I uh, used the elastic strain as elastic stress and the elastic uh, equivalence el equivalent stress and the uh, equivalent strain to replace uh, the stress and the strain in the above uh, equation. Uh, here I plot the results of two uh, constraint parameters. From the left uh, track is, uh, is the result of uh, parameter phi. You can see for CT and SEMB sample, uh, the, val the, phi uh, phi the value of phi of 25 millimeter CT specimens are lower than uh, SEMB specimens, which indicates uh, these CT specimens have higher constraint. And uh, it also can be found a high order relationship between the parameter phi and the uh, fracture toughness. But uh, for, C, uh, for three GB and five GB specimens, such high order relationship no longer exists. Uh, but uh, the difference of phi uh, between a five GB and three GB specimens are very distinct. Uh, this means phi is still sensitive to this uh, constraint change uh, affected by multi axiality And uh, in the right pic uh, picture is the result of uh, the proposed par parameter. Uh, the, this parameter is formed by the plastic uh, strain energy uh, with uh, geometry factor 
the up uh, the upper the upper case letter B is the thickness, and the uh, lower case letter B is the length uh, from the crack tip to the surface, which directly faces the crack tip. Uh, then you can see for CT and SEMB sample, uh, it shows almost the same re result as the parameter phi. Uh, also here can find a high order relationship between the, this uh, parameter and the, the fracture toughness. And uh, what's more, the, for 3 pb and the 5 pb specimens, this uh, monotonic correlation uh, still exists. So through this work, I obtained three conclusions. Uh, as many literature proved, uh, the unified parameter, uh, unified constraint parameter phi uh, is, works very well for CT and SEMB samples. Uh, there is a high order relationship between phi and uh, the fracture toughness, but uh, such a high order relationship cannot be found uh, for C 3 pb and 5 pb specimens. But uh, parameter phi is still sensitive to the constraint change affected by multi-axiality. Uh, as for the unified uh, constraint parameter proposed uh, based on the plastic strain engine uh, works better than phi. Uh, it can not only uh, quantify the constraint level of four different specimens, but uh, always can find a monotonic correlation between the, this uh, parameter and the fracture toughness. And my future plan is uh, first to complete uh, the fracture toughness test. I'm currently doing uh, with ASTM A5 uh, 516 grade 770 steel on um, SEMB and CT specimens with a large range of uh, geometry changes. And once the, the, the test is complete, uh, all the experimental data will be used in finite element analysis to validate the proposed parameter again. And if necessary, other supplementary experiments will be done to extend this approach uh, applicability. Uh, my presentation is over, thank you. Thank you, Jen. Um, so uh, good um, timekeeping. So it's perfect within the 20 minutes. Um, any question? <laughs> Thank you. Great presentation. Some great work you're doing. My question is one about the future. So, how do you see the root impact for your work? How, how is it going to be used by the wider community? Uh, yeah, that's a good, a good question. <clears throat> uh, for now, my uh, thought is uh, you can see in this right uh, uh, picture uh, if you have uh, some uh, standard samples uh, you can do the test and then you can obtain uh, such a relationship high order relationship from these standard samples and if you want to calculate, uh, predict uh, the fracture toughness of uh, non-standard samples, then you can uh, create the model, models uh, with finite element analysis. And uh, you can also get another uh, similar curve. And these two curves can, may, may can, can have a cross point and this point it can be the prediction 
uh, result. Uh, I, 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 I'm, uh, this is also my next uh, uh, work I'm trying to do. Do, do you see this as something that's going into the standard in the future? Uh, possible. <laughs> Um, anyone else? Um, I've got a question for you, Artin. So back to your the displacement. Where you have the log displacement curve? Can you show me that slide again, please? Uh, sorry. Wait, the slide with the log displacement curve, um, and um, you have all the plots, yeah, and then you have your FEA position. Can you go back to the slide, please? Yes, uh, this one here. Um, so um, great work on the FEM model. My question is that you know you have all these um, legends on the in, in, in the in, on the graph. What uh, what do those mean? You no, know, are they in relative to the to the position and the the design of the specimen? Mm. How do you get those? Yes. Uh, okay. So uh, I didn't show the whole model. Actually, there is a semi circle part, like it's a lot higher down. And then the force, the lower the force uh, here is that uh, as a uh, the force uh, uh, obtained from this uh, punch model. And then the displacement also can be uh, extracted from this uh, the reference point of this. Uh, so uh, I applied the uh, displacement load uh, when uh, I, I'm doing the I was doing the the other payment. And then uh, I can get the load and displacement and the drop and do this in half and the optimal curves. Okay, so then usually when we try to get a load versus displacement curve. No, I'm not trying to do it. <laughs> um, the you would define a point in the model where you you get a curve, and um, it's just that when I'm looking at the measurements of the experiments, there are so many curves. Um, do you know where the the sensors or the strain gauges are in place on this specimen? How do they compare with what uh, where you have uh, extracted your your load versus the specimen curve from your model? How close are they? Um, I guess I said, uh, I just caught an extract and sorry. Just you on that one on the you know, the the model that the load displacement. Then you in the experiment, you don't have many of these this this uh, this 它的数据，这个具体这个地方到底在那个 specimen 是哪一个位置？然后跟模型比较，到底是怎么怎么比较？哦，对<咳>、yeah, ，you can see, uh, from this, uh, uh setup, and the F B model and the uh specimen, I created just like this model, and uh, from the test, so we apply the so uh, I use the same uh, displacement uh, load with uh, the models, and uh, then uh, this data is extracted, uh, is uh, recorded by the machine. Okay. And uh, the data from the FDA analysis. Uh, it's extracted from this uh, a point, reference point from this uh, from the uh, okay. Thank you. Um, any further questions? Good. Thank you, John. Good work.